Hey guys, welcome back to Serial at Midnight's. My name is Heath Holland and this is a new release. You know what? I'm going to call this a new release super show because we've got a ton of new releases here. This tall, it's my cardio, it's my workout, my resistance training for the day. Um, tall stack of new releases, DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K, multiple 4Ks in this collection uh, from all over the world. I mean, there's stuff here from England. There's stuff. It's it's a worldwide effort. So, I also want to say you got to be careful how I say this. Stick around to the end because we're gonna do like a little cereal at midnight after dark at the end of this episode to talk about the more mature audience titles, which is something I've never really done before. We're gonna try it out here and see how it goes. Uh, so, hey, that's something to stick around for. Let's kick it off with Arrow's new release of Basket Case on 4K. I can't believe... You know what? I can believe. Basket Case is such a cult classic. This movie has such a rabid horror audience that it makes total sense that this would get a 4K. Uh, also, I'm going to... like. I'm just going to pull the curtain back. 2024, I'm being as absolutely transparent as possible. A lot of this stuff, like half of this stuff, just showed up today. Like, just. It just was delivered to my doorstep. And I have unboxed it, but I... And I've unwrapped it, so I didn't have to do that on camera. But I wanted to just kind of discover these with you whenever possible. Which kind of raises another point. The purpose of these videos is not for me to brag and be like, look what I got. I consider these videos a service to show you what's coming out. I don't make them for me. I make them for you guys. Because I know, as a physical media collector, the value of being able to lay eyes on something so that you're not buying it sight unseen and just to see it in action. Maybe get somebody's take on it if I have a take to give. But there's things we're going to talk about here that, I, frankly, I didn't ask for. I didn't even know it existed until it showed up on my doorstep. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll pass the message on. You know, that's kind of where a lot of this stuff is for me. The things that I really connect with, like if you only watch these videos for me, the things that I really connect with, I try to do more focused, dedicated spotlights on. Check out my recent video on the 10 star, Anthony Mann's the 10 star. Check it out, the review for Tormented. Bert I. Gordon's Torment, and I did one for Night of the Blood Monster that I wanted to talk about. When I connect with something or I have something to say about something, I put as big of a spotlight on it as I can. So this is just like a, a service video. It's not the core of what this channel is about, right? So I, hopefully that's that's clear. Uh, Basket Case is a crazy movie. It, it, hopefully you've seen it. I'm not going to do like, you know, maybe, maybe later I'll do a, a video about Basket Case. I actually don't know how much I have to say about it. Um... This is loaded. I'm just now kind of looking at all this stuff. I'm going to hold this up. We got a 4K restoration from the 16. Oh, it's a 16 millimeter negative, you guys. That's interesting because ideally you want a 35 millimeter source, right? You want uh, you want the best film negative source you can get. So 16 would have to be blown up to 35. I'm just really interested to see what this looks like. Um Supplied by the Museum of Modern Art in cooperation with the director. It's got HDR, Dolby Vision. We've got an audio commentary, uh, another archival commentary. So that's two commentaries. A short film by the director, me and Brad, the Bradley Boys. A uh, brief interview with the director. Wow, this just keeps going. Jo interview with Joe Bob Briggs. Basket case at MoMA? Whoa. Seriously. This is <laughs> loaded with stuff. I should mention... Uh, this is a 4K only package, so you're going to have to choose a 4K or a Blu-ray. They don't give you both. You know, as years ago, my wife and I went to Disney World, and uh, the hotel we stayed at had a coffee bar. And my wife ordered a coffee, and the, the, the barista said, it'll come sweet. 
and f every for years we've been using that and I'm passing that on to you guys now so you can use it if you want to you have to choose the 4k or the blu-ray it don't come sweet meaning <laughs> you have to like it's not a it's not it's not a perfect scenario we got a card in here for one of the coffin Joe films and a booklets basket case booklet which they just freak the half the audience out I don't like horror. Our horror was scary. Uh, case history, but you know what? I'm not going to read this. I'll just hold that up and let you see it. You know, I love me a booklet, though. I prefer... Listen, acknowledging that there are many great video essays out there, I still prefer to read the information on my own. So this is, uh, this is a, a, a big... Uh, this is a big release from Arrow. This does have reversible artwork. I think I like this better. And you've got that slip cover, the bloody basket. It is hollow, no, it's not hollow foil. What is it? It's just foil, foil embossed. It's calling back my comic book origins from the 1990s with the hollow foil comment. All right, here's another from Arrow. Night Falls on Manhattan. I think I've got a review for this. I'm not sure. I know I've talked about it before because it's come out, uh, imprint release Nightfalls on Manhattan, did they not? This is from Arrow. It's a good movie. It's Andy Garcia, uh, Richard, Dre Richard Dreyfus. This means something. Lena Olin. And it's really a very sympathetic look at a, what's their tagline? In a city of 9 million people, is there room for one honest man? In a career that includes Serpico, Prince of the City, and The Verdict, Director Sidney Lumet has cross-examined the fine line between those who enforce the law and those who exploit it. He's a good guy. It, it really, like, I don't want to, I don't want to just lay it all out there. It deals with corruption. And I would say it also deals with the inevitability of corruption. That any position of power or leadership is inevitably corruptible. That's probably all I should say about it. It's a good movie. What do we got here? Brand new 2K restoration or 2K remaster done by Arrow from the original camera negative. Uh, let's see. Archival commentary with the director. Archival commentary by Andy Garcia, Rob Liebman, Ron Liebman, uh, with producers Josh Kramer and Tom Mount. The directors, Sidney Lumet, an hour-long archive documentary from 2002. On set with Lumet, Garcia, Dreyfus, Olin, Holm, and Liebman. Behind the scenes footage. Okay, very good. We've got uh, reversible artwork here. This Oh, this is going to be the classic poster in VHS art. I'm flipping it. I'm going to flip it. Honestly, at this phase in my life, I'm connecting with these movies a lot more than I used to, and it's actually probably a lot of what I want to see and what I want to talk about. We'll see how well that sticks true over the things we're about to talk about, because we're going to go to some crazy places. Remember, stick around for Serial at Midnight After Dark. And that's a joke, because Midnight is After Dark. I know. It's table of Contents. Uh, Andy Garcia is great. I, I feel like, is he? I know he's still working, but... Is he one of those actors that, when things started to shift towards television, slipped a little bit further into the background? Or, or like, I just feel like a lot of the people that I want to watch are either on television or they're doing something that I'm not even because television is also scattered now, right? With the streaming thing, how do you even how do how do young people even discover anything? How do any of us discover anything? The Scarface Mob. Uh, this is really good, and this is I'll just go ahead and tell you that there's plans to give this its own video coming up very soon. This was essentially the pilot for the Untouchables series in the 1950s, Desilu, a Desilu production. In fact, it has uh, Desis on this. There's a bit at the beginning of the thing from, from Desi, uh, Desi RNS. This is, if you know the Untouchables, now I'm, I'm not talking about the De Palma, Kevin Costner, Sean Connery, what are you prepared to do? I'm talking about the original Untouchables series with Robert Stack, where he faced off against Capone, and then <laughs> this 
As that series evolved, it's like he's facing everybody. Like Elliot Ness brought down Bonnie and Clyde. I mean, it was like as many people as they could have him face off against. But it started here uh, with this TV movie. It was largely based on uh, Elliot Ness's story, his his memoir, his actual experiences with Capone and the Chicago mob. And it's good. It's a TV movie, but they exported this as a it was like a theatrical cut that had about four minutes in it. So there's a scene with a bur- there's a burlesque scene with a lady in pasties, and I'm like, that's probably added, right? I can't imagine that was on television in the 1950s. Uh, but it's it's good. I like it. I I have some things that I want to say about it, but I'm gonna save it. So that's an incentive for you to stay tuned. Remember to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss this. If, you know, YouTube just serves you more of what you're already watching. So make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss that video. Uh, let me flip this around so you can read that. But we've got um, Gangbusters, a brand new video essay on the film by the uh, the film and the career of the director Phil Carlson by David Cairns. Philip Kemp on the Scarface Mob, a brand new video essay. Um, we've got, uh, the Scarface mob and the untouched, but you know, I just hate sitting here reading special features to you guys. I just hate it. It's, it's pretty loaded. We got lobby cards here. These are great lobby cards too. And they do have the, that art on the back. How many of you guys, whenever you see Robert Stack, you think of, uh, unsolved mysteries? Cause I gotta say, I for sure do. When I was watching this movie, Knowing full well I've got The Untouchables on DVD, right? I've watched The Untouchables, but it's been a while. And so going back to this, just waiting for him to be like, if you have any information that can lead to the solving of this case, contact the number on your screen. Because Unsolved Mysteries had that great theme tune. That great theme tune. Write the theme tune, sing the theme tune. With... uh. It was like it was almost like a horror a horror tone horror tune. This I I'm very happy with this. And here's our book booklet. Birth of the Untouchables. Stay tuned. We are going to move on to something that uh, I know very little about, and it just showed up. But when I unboxed it, when I when I unwrapped it, when I took it out of the shrink wrap or the uh, the envelope, I was like, "What?" Because it just came unannounced. This is one of those things that I like. I didn't even know. Nobody asked me. I didn't ask for it. It just showed up. And that, that sounds great. Like it is great. But then there's an expectation of review all the time, right? So if you're like, he gets free stuff all the time, it's never free never free there's always an expectation and if you if somebody sends you something and you don't immediately cover that hey you got the thing right where's the coverage and if you're like oh i'm getting to it a few days later really need that coverage now like it's and you do that for 25 titles it's never free that's the point is it's never free but i'm so excited to be talking about this uh boris karloff who I have a special interest in. I did the commentary for the Boris Karloff film, The Man They Could Not Hang, on MVD's Thrillers from the Vault collection, alongside C. Courtney Joyner. Big Karloff fan. Uh, and I did not even realize that this was a thing that was happening. This is the complete 26-episode series, Colonel March of Scotland Yard, featuring Ewan Roberts and Christopher Lee. I'm sorry, Boris Karloff and Christopher Lee. Mur- uh, Mysteries, Murders, and the Supernatural includes original trailer, episode synopsis, photo gallery, and trivia. This is a slipcase. Here, I'm going to flip that around. Freeze that. Read that. This is coming from uh, Film Chest. Film Chest Media, the Film Chest Media Group, who put out... Uh, we did a, a Mickey Spillane. This was, this was last... I think this was 2023. Might have even been, yeah, it was 2023. They, they put out um, one of the Mike Hammer series, the Stacey Keach Mike Hammer series from the, it was like the 90s, which was the only Mike Hammer, I think, that had not been put out on DVD at that point. So, I mean, they're doing, they're doing some really cool things right now. They got some new people working there that are, that seem to be deeply invested in um, 
taking things to another level. I think we're seeing that a lot across the board is that these companies are, they're leveling up. And this is, this is definitely leveling up. So let's see here. It, okay. Stacy Keach is Mickey Spillane's Mike Hammer, Private Eye, 1997 to 1998. Look, they did that. They've released the Lost World. I actually gave one of those away because I already had the Lost World. They sent one for review. I gave it away. That was a long, that was months ago. If you missed it, I'm so sorry. But, um, Look, uh, what's that beyond? Decoy dark, with Beverly Garland, dark film mysteries. So look, they're doing some stuff. Like, I wonder if this would scan through your television. If you want to find out more, <laughs> scan that. Here's our booklet for her. So how many how many discs are we looking at? One, two, so three discs. Uh, looks like eight episodes. Yeah, it's about eight episodes, eight or nine episodes per disc. How 242 minutes? Oh, okay. Well, that's too much. That's too much. That's too many episodes per disc. Should have been a four disker. That's 217 minutes on one disc, 242 on disc two and on disc three. That's going to lead to some compression and some artifacting that's going to be visible on screen. Nobody asked me. Should have been a four disc set. However, I'm grateful that this exists on DVD. Here's, this is really nicely done. Very cool. Well, I am excited to start this. Enter Boris Karloff is the one-eyed Colonel March who alone runs Scotland Yard's Department of Queer Complaints. Department of Queer Complaints. A term referencing extreme cases considered unsolvable by standard the standard fare of British intelligence. It's like the X Files in the 1950s. I'm sorry, Agent Mulder, Agent Scully, we're shutting down the X Files again. It's time to go to the house. Oh, no. uh, from MVD, the re-released corrected joysticks. Uh, Blu-ray is now shipping. Uh, I'm, I'm. It's still sealed. This is. If I've already, we've listen. We've already done this in a previous video. Uh, the first release of this, which was never supposed to ship out. Now I got mine because that was. I'm, I, I'm on the commentary. The commentary for this, me, uh, Jesse Nelson from Diabolic DVD, and Eric Wilkinson from MVD, the guy that made this whole thing happen. So it's the three of us on the commentary. When it was first released, there was an audio issue and just really some subpar printing issues. This is the replacement. Amazon was told not to ship the old one and they did it anyway, which is kind of, that's, that's so Amazon, right? That's so Amazon. Hey, don't do this thing. Okay, we're gonna do it anyway. How many of us have had really expensive box sets shipped from Amazon in, a, in an envelope? Not even a bubble mailer, but just a plastic envelope. And then you call customer, you deal with customer service and like, we're so sorry. I dealt with this. I ordered a Masters of the Universe uh, thing. Um, and they sent it in a bag. And I was like, it was like one of the vehicles. I was like, you sent this in a bag and it's beat to crap. And they're like, so sorry. I was like, just don't like replace it, but don't send it in a bag. Send it another one in a bag. So like, no, send it in a box. And then the third one came in a bag, but it was safe enough that I just kept it. They don't let, it's like, it's too, they're too big to pay attention. Right? So now I'm just ranting. Uh, joysticks is now get, get this. You, you, because you, because you follow cereal at midnight, because you like cool things. Should I have saved this for the after dark portion? I, maybe I should have, but this is maybe too tame for where we're going. Serial at Midnight After Dark. Uh, this is, it's a great release. I, I highly recommend it. The, the packaging is of course meant to evoke an Atari cartridge or an Atari package. No copyright infringement intended. I think it's an homage. Can we say that it's an homage to the Atari style? It's, it says one viewer, two viewers, one motion picture. Like this is the, to date, the best MVD rewind collection packaging ever. And I'm so glad that I'm on it because now I have like, it's not just great because I'm on it. It's also great because it's just the best, coolest thing they've done so far. 
uh, mean guns. This was a f so back in the '90s, I worked the video counter at my it was at a grocery store. I did a lot of things, but I ended my time there as the video guy. I started in the carts as the buggy boy and the bagger, and then I worked my way up to the dairy section, and then cashier, and then I jumped to the video counter, and that's where I ended my tenure there. But this was always a hit. This was there at the time that I was there, and it was always a hit. Like mean guns, because it was Christopher Lambert, Christopher Lambert. Uh, who was hot off of, uh, what year is this, 98 maybe, 97, 1997, okay, hot off, pretty hot off of um, The Hunted, which is a great underrated movie, where he plays, he basically he witnesses a ninja assassination, and then the ninja comes for him, and you have to suspend a lot of disbelief, because a ninja would kill Christopher Lambert so fast, but uh, Highlander, at that point in time, it was Highlander The Final Dimension was kind of around and uh i just i don't know it's it's got ice t in it who's now doing car shield commercials which is so crazy yo everybody knows that your car is going to get some damage right car shield protect your car like this is the guy from the 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 like with the police and he didn't it's so funny to me anyway it's a fun movie uh this is the mvd rewind collection package so you know you're going to have clean art on the inside and the slip cover is going to homage the video store be kind rewind warning full retail of this product will be collected if the security seal is altered or removed really just about perfect even this that's just about perfect what do we got here we've got uh, the main feature in 1080p, we've got oh, audio commentary by Albert Piyun, introduction by Albert Piyun, new introduction with producer Gary Schmoller. No, not an introduction, new interview with Gary Schmoller. It's almost a half an hour long. New interview with the executive producer, that's another 23, almost 24 minutes. New interview with the composer, that's 18 minutes. Trailer, mini poster. And this does have reversible art. So you got that on one side, and then you've got the clean Mean Guns poster art on the other side. The label always looks like, the disc always looks like a VHS label. Top notch stuff from MVD and Wilkinson. Top notch. All right, this is from Fun City Editions. Uh, I'm interested in this. I can't speak to it because I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. This is Deep in the Heart uh, slash Handgun. And I guess, I, you know what? I better be careful talking about this because there's a lot of things that I can't really say without fear of losing monetization. See, when you post a video, I know some of you guys think like, well, he's being extreme. When you post a video to YouTube and you're a monetized channel, there's a whole checklist of things you have to say this does or does not contain this. And um, the subject matter of this is one of the things that I have to say if it has or not. And then that will be decided if I'm eligible for monetization after that. So it's a slippery, tr it's just tricky. It's a tricky situation. So I might let you guys do some of the reading on this. It seems like a very timely, very topical movie. Um, it's one of those assault revenge movies. And by assault, I mean the one that starts with an R that I don't think I can say. But, uh, or I could say it if I wasn't monetized, but I want to keep the, the and, and some of you guys are like, well, why would you care about monetization? You get get the truth out. Well, because that's also part of the game is when your channel is monetized, YouTube has an incentive to promote that video so that more people see that video. Makes sense, right? It's just, there's a series of rules that you need to follow if you want to get your message out there. Um, so we're talking about this, but we're talking about it in a way that is hopefully um, smart. <laughs> smart. You guys know. You guys know what's up. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to hold this up and let you guys read that. And I will talk about this really nice slipcover that is double-sided. This is a movie that does deal with uh, with violence. Um with firearms and revenge and a lot of things that are in the news right now. We've got a new 4K restoration with the 35 millimeter camera negative. If somebody's like, why no 4K? We've talked about it a bazillion times because 4K is the least selling format, but the most expensive to produce. So 
just doesn't make financial sense most of the time. Got a newly recorded audio commentary by Erica Schultz and Chris O'Neill. Archival interview with the writer, producer, director, Tony, uh, Tony Garnett. Image gallery, theatrical trailer, booklet with a new essay by Alexandra Heller Nicholas, who is popping up on so many releases these days. Good on Alexandra. Uh, this does have reversible art. A lot of text here, which is good. That's a compliment. That's not, <laughs> it's not a, not a slander. A lot of text. Wow. I got a lot. No, I, that's my preferred, preferred thing. Um, from, oh, is this from 88? Fil yeah. 88 films, a movie. Uh, this is, I have no, I have not watched this. I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. So I'm going to let you guys, this is another one where like, I'm just the messenger on this. Because I can no longer keep up with all these Asian cinema. There's so much Asian cinema imprint just launched a whole line. Imprint Asia just tapping into Asian cinema. So, I mean, I, I'm i doing my best here. You know, I'm guessing we're going to have reversible art on this. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Flip that around. What year is this? Um, ooh, 155 minutes. It's 1965. We've got a brand new 4K remaster from the original camera negative. We've got, oh, newly translated English subtitles, but an interview with, see this, interview with Oriental cinema expert, Tony Raines. This is one of those things where this is how you know this is British because that's a word we're not supposed to use in the USA. You're supposed to use Asian in the USA. So if anybody's like, I can't believe Heath just said that, that's, in diff it's interesting how different parts of the world, different things are culturally acceptable. Again, don't at me. Don't. I'm the messenger on this, you guys. Somebody, some of you guys are like, why is he protesting so hard? Because people come so hard in the comments with the shaming and the like, the policing. Instead of us all just trying to have a good time, there are those among us who just go like, I cannot believe you. And they're here. They're here for physical media too. Don't think that that's an outside. That's everybody. That's that has infiltrated all aspects of society. Even the physical media crowd wants to get mad at other people about saying certain things. So, anyway, but Tony Raines is amazing. Like he'll some of these uh, interviews, you're like, there's probably not that much to say, right? And then he's talked for like a half an hour, and you're just like, what? You're leaning forward. You're taking notes. You're like, wow. I mean, literally a master at this stuff. Uh, we got the restoration comparison, reversible sleeve featuring the uh, the new artwork and then the classic artwork. Who has seen this, and what do you guys think about it? Again, I have to, I'm realizing that there's some things I'm just never going to get to ever. I'm never ever going to get to it. I had a realization today. It was actually today. I was I take a three mile walk every single day. I was on my three mile walk and I realized, I was like, you know, whatever area of cinema you choose to focus on, there is more on that path than there is hours in the day to ever see. It would take years, decades to see all of the things in that path. And I'm interested in multiple paths, Westerns, noir, yeah, Asian cinema, uh, horror, it, all these, like there's so much, there are tens of thousands of movies in each of these fields and there's just not enough time. I'm realizing how little time we all have, how little time I have. The Inspector Wears Skirts 2. So this is the sequel. This is also from 88 Films. Hey, I just realized, so we've got on one side of the cover is this, the uh, O card. And the other side is this. So you've got a color scheme. This one didn't do that. I kind of like that. Uh, let me flip that. Let's see. Limited edition slipcase, limited edition double-sided fold-out poster. 
got the translation and the dub notes. Audio commentary by Frank Jang. I also enjoy Frank Jang's commentaries. He's very funny. He doesn't take it too seriously. He's not too academic. If you've heard any of my my audio commentaries, I also I tend to lean away from the academic approach. Like even though my my interests are probably academic, but I also believe that movies are for everybody and an audio commentary is not a lecture. It should be a conversation. You're just not able to talk back during the commentary, but that's how I view it. And movies are for everybody. Movies are a communal art form. They're not for the rarefied air. Movies are for everybody. So Frank gets that, and I really enjoy his commentaries. We've got an interview with the director, interview with the stuntman, Hong Kong trailer, still gallery. Was there anything inside this that I should have talked about? Yeah, there was a booklet. We didn't. I didn't show you guys the booklet for this release. Sorry. It's just so much stuff. So much stuff. And I know we're all feeling it. And that's another service that I hope these videos can provide because there's only... We are all facing limitations. Listen, you saw my interview with with indicator and the guy goes he says there's not enough time money or space we're all dealing with this there's not enough time money or space so hopefully that's one of the services these videos can provide is to help you make up your mind we have two new arrivals from radiance check out my interview with fran from radiance the founder of radiance fran simeone from radiance he used to work at arrow started his own company this is number 51 and number 52. We have uh, number 51 is misunderstood. Which I have not seen. This is the World English Subtitle Blu-ray premiere. It's the tell you where tell you where it's from. It's Italian. A film by Lucio Comencini. New 2024 restoration. 2K restoration from the OCN. Uh, there's a lot of stuff there. And The Shape of Night is, is this going to be, uh, Jap yep, Japanese, 1964, hold on, what was this, 1966, 1964, World Blu-ray premiere, wow. You always get reversible arts and... An incredible book with these Radiance releases. So can you tell I'm wearing down? It's hard. It's hard to keep the energy up for these longer videos. That's why I'm leaning a little bit away from those live streams. You know, I was doing those live streams for a while. But um, you do a live stream for 90 minutes when you're done. Whew, it's just hard for me. Uh, let's see what we got in uh, in this one. Oh, reversible art. Looks looks wonderful. Uh, and a hard, hard turn here. <laughs> Jess Franco's. <laughs> Jess Franco's. Downtown Heat. Uh, this is, it is it's from Full Moon. And I have not watched this. I said something about Jess Franco in a previous video. It was in my Night of the Blood Monster review. Where I was like, you know, some of Jess Franco. Like, I just don't. He doesn't seem to have a an authorial tone. I'm like, what is, what, are, what do you summarize from Jess Franco? Um, but, and people were like, well, there's probably a lot of movies of his that you haven't seen. And I'm like, granted, that's true. So downtown heat is one of those movies. So I will check this out. It's got Mike Connors, which is my hook because it's Mannix. Now I love Mannix. If you've seen once upon a time in Hollywood, 
I wonder if Tarantino loves Mannix too. Anyway, Mike Connors was Mannix and he's the star of this movie from, um, what is the year from 1990? So this is going to be latter day Mike Connors. There's no features or anything here, but they say it's one of Franco Nero's most interesting, not Franco Nero. That's Django. One of Jess Franco's most interesting, colorful and eccentric late period films. Uh, it was shot in 1990, but not released until 1994 due to a legal dispute between Franco and Eurochin. Anyway, have you guys seen Downtown Heat? What do you think about it? I'm glad it's getting back out there. All right, we're getting into some weird stuff before we switch to After Dark. This is uh, from Dreamscape Media. This is Mad Max Exposed. Step into the world of the original Mad Max movie. Many people feel a true connection to the original Mad Max movie. Whatever the reason for loving it, the iconic Australian piece of cinematic history has a lasting impact. And this documentary cast and crew from the original movie share some, movie, share some of their behind-the-scenes secrets, how stunts were planned, executed, etc. It's DVD, right? This is a budget release. Also a budget release. This is from Cheesy Movies. This is The McMasters. Um, in 1865, there was nothing more dangerous than a black man living with a red woman on a white man's land. Can I say that stuff too? This, I'm just reading the package, guys. This has starring Burl Ives. That's right. The Snowman from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer with David Carradine, Jack Palance, it's just my Jack Palance. I, I could get down on the floor and do one-armed push-ups, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, John Carradine and Brock Peters. It is an incredible cast. So I haven't watched this yet. Uh, Cheesy Movies really selects movies from... Um, they're not remastered. Let's say that. They're not remastered. They're usually from existing sources, but you get them on a disc. Sometimes they're public domain. I guess they're not always public domain, but sometimes they are. So anyway, here, I'll let you guys read that. One more from Cheesy Movies. This is uh, Piranha, Stay Out of the Water. Now, when this was announced, I looked up as much as I could about it. I did request this. I looked up as much as I could about it because it's Henry Silva. Uh, it's not Henry Silva. It's, uh, it's William Smith. I wasn't telling you guys I'm wearing down. Uh, and I was like, what is, this, what is this Piranha movie with William Smith? I couldn't find a lot about it. So it is uh, two wildlife photographers, a homicidal hunter, a head start. I don't know. William Smith, Peter Brown, Tom Simcox, uh, directed by William Gibson. Some vintage video store era stuff right there. This is like the bottom shelf of the video story. Like, what is this? This is new from Cleopatra. This is Fog Hat. Full disclosure, another one that I didn't even realize was coming out. This is Slow Ride Live in Concert. It was recorded over two nights in Texas, 1999, shortly before Peverett's premature death at the age of 56. So it's a 10-song set. I don't know a lot of Fog Hat outside of Slow Ride. So it's it's nicely put together physically. I can say that. Like this slipcover is very aesthetically pleasing it's very glossy can't speak to the video quality on this uh it is a blu-ray it is all region so for the fog hat fans out there be aware all right it's time to switch to serial at midnight after dark you know i turned the lights out i still have the studio lights on but i turned the overheads off i don't even know if you can tell i was trying to dim the lights but we've got um five movies for the 18 and up crowd and it's not really a thing that i do here on the channel i don't talk a lot about this stuff it's because there's it's kind of a family thing right and i'm so focused on hollywood history it's not really an area we go into but we're going to do it here as as best as we can because again there's a lot of, like i can't show you most of this stuff uh, this is another cheesy movies that I was saving for the end the idea is it's the, it's 2037 the world has run out of fuel for fuel fuel for electric power 
An award-winning team of scientists come up with an energy source using the world's oldest profession. And so it's just, it's that kind of a movie from, uh, what's the year on this? 1975. This is on the front, the ultimate in science friction. <laughs> so I don't know. It made me laugh. All right. So for real though, guys, this is huge from, uh, from powerhouse slash indicator. We have two more John Rollin titles and, uh, they're on 4k. Now look, we've talked a little bit about John Rollin in the past. If you saw my interview with indicator, which I hope you did, there's a whole lot more of these coming and they are really pulling out the stops on these because they are loaded up. Let's, let's take, take these, you don't do them chronologically. So the demoniacs, no, that's the latter one. The first one is uh, the nude vampire from 1970, right? And if the two, this is the one that I kind of prefer, I suppose, because it's more, uh, it's a little bit more innocent. It's a little less, it's, it's a little, it's a lot less angry, frankly, than the demoniacs, which feels very angry, <clears throat> but it's got that sort of playful psychedelic thing that I really connect with a lot that was present in the sixties and then pretty much died shortly thereafter, probably died at Altamont, if you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, new 4k HDR restoration of the surreal 1970s, uh, features is Rollins second feature film, his first in color. So this, this comes away, this J card, it's a little J card, but it's a J card comes away and we've got, a whole lot of stuff here. So I'm gonna let you read that. Freeze that, because I'm about to take it away. Now it's got, uh, it's got a booklet that we I can't show you here. It's full of f photographs that are not okay, they're not okay here. Just cannot show them. But a lot of text. I mean, this is a really dense book. Uh, about an 80 page perfect bound perfect bound book. Filled with color and black and white photography interviews try to find the table of contents here is this okay yeah and i've talked about this in the last indicator stuff that we talked about i like that they've cracked this uh they're able to make these releases very shelf friendly and still give you all the bells and whistles so this little cardboard package has the movie and uh can i show that but uh, It's just really put on. So how, I guess the best question you guys probably have is like, how does it look in 4K? It looks really great. Obviously the best these movies have ever looked, the best these movies probably ever will look. If you're a 4K enthusiast and you're a European, how would you, how would you describe it? A European erotic horror thriller, multi-genre movie fan, you're gonna be very happy with these. These are very well done. They have a nice grain structure. Uh, the Demoniacs, again, new 4K trans, uh, trans restoration. Oh, these are limited too, I should mention. That if you want this presentation of these movies, these are limited. Uh, these are the numbers that I got. Whoops. And what was my number on the nude vampire? These are multi-region titles. These are the um, U US and international the uk and us versions of these so again did you see all the extras i'm gonna hold this up i'm gonna let you freeze that freeze it it's a lot of stuff multiple interviews with jean Rollin. we've got uh interviews with the people associated with the films again i can't really get into these booklets but i can show you this Just for what they are, for what you're coming to these movies for. I can't show that either. I can't even show you the cover of the Blu-ray. Uh, for what these movies are, Indicator has shown them a lot of love. And like, I, it's like, it's, it's not my thing, right? But again, these videos aren't just for me. These videos are for you. These videos are a service for you so you know what's coming out. So if I seem like this, I just... It's not, I don't come from this. Um, and then this is going to be even harder to talk about. But Cult Epics has just released two Tinto Brass films on 4K. And again, like if you know what these movies are, you know what they are. I don't have to tell you. And I, I can't really show you here either. They've got lobby cards 
They've got reversible art. They've got explicit art. Uh, on like once you get past the slipcase, there it gets. It's there, but they're so silly. That's the thing about these Tinto Brass movies is they are so campy. Like, and I guess deliberately campy, but they have really <laughs> pulled <laughs> pulled out all the stops for these. Uh, all ladies do it has uh, that's a 1992 movie. It's got a 4K transfer, which again it looks really, really good. I can't believe. I, maybe I can, because I know there's an audience for these. But there's a 4K transfer for this from the original camera negative, with HDR audio commentary by Eugenia Ercolani and Troy Howarth, uh, 4K theatrical trailers. Then the Blu-ray has the audio commentary trailers, an interview with Tinto Brass from 2001. Outtakes from All Ladies Do It. There's a slipcase, reversible sleeve, uh, with uncensored Italian poster art, 20 page illustrated booklet with an essay by Eugenio Ercolani and Domenica, uh, sorry, Domenico Monetti, and then a 4K repro Italian lobby cards. I'm like, did these actually sit in a lobby? Because again, naked people on this thing. I'm like, was that just like, like if you were a kid and you were going to see Cinema Paradiso or whatever, like <laughs> there's the lobby cards. And then uh, uh, Frivolous Lola has the 4K transfer. Uh, it's a 1998 film. It's got a commentary, same com commentary by uh, Eugenio Ercolani and Nathaniel Thompson. 4K trailers, slipcase. Oh, I skipped over. The Blu-ray has those the commentary. Interview with director Tinto Brass from 2004. Photo gallery. Uh, slipcase, reversible sleeve with the Italian poster art. Uh, the 20-page book. The lobby cards. Like, if you're into this, they're really, really well done. Again, not not my thing. I'd rather be talking about, you know, Alan Ladd or Humphrey Bogart or even, you know, uh, Cary Grant or something like that. But I know, first of all, these were sent to me. So, got to talk about them, right? So it's, it's my job to tell you guys about these things. So, hopefully we did that in a way that was not too, uh, too titillating and did not anger the this the YouTube gods too much. Try to keep it innocent, fun, and relatively image free. Uh, let's talk. Like, what have you seen from this haul? Because, like, honestly, there's a lot of stuff here I have not seen that I know almost nothing about. So that's where you guys can come in and you can tell me: Have you seen some of these Asian movies? Um, Jess Franco. This is a good opportunity to talk about Jess Franco. Because when I talked about Night of the Blood Monster, it split people. Some people were like, yeah, yeah. Especially these movies kind of lean on this other thing. But I want to know, like, is the one we talked about in this video a departure from that? Because I haven't seen it yet. So I always like these videos, especially these videos where it's just me showing a bunch of stuff. Like, I, I want to have fun with it. You know what I mean? I want us to have fun with it and just talk about this stuff. And a lot of times that's like, there are always people that are there for that, but then there's, it, it can get like, you know, people get upset that I, honestly, people get upset at me that I show these, like I do these videos. They're like just rubbing our face in it. I'm like, no, no, I'm trying to show you everything that's out. So, uh, keep it fun. But I would love to know what you think about some of these releases so that we can use these, use the comments as just hanging out at the video store. That's what it can be. It's what I'd love for it to be. So thanks you guys. I appreciate you so much. Take care. Oh, by the way, remember to subscribe, remember to give thumbs ups and by, and comments, and that way you never miss a video. If you like this stuff and you want to support Serial at Midnight, there's also memberships. You can do YouTube memberships or Patreon memberships. You get exclusive videos roughly once a week, and there's a nice community built around that too. But most importantly, it's a way to keep these, you know, uh, sponsor free. It, it's, it's you and me, and it will, for as long as I can keep it this way, it will just be you and me without having to shill for a couple, because these are sent to me, right? But these aren't sponsored. This is not paid for content. I'm not paid for this. It's you and me. That's it. It's you and me. So thank you. I appreciate you guys. Take care. Until next time, I will catch you later.